Three Senate races remain undecided this weekend in Georgia, Minnesota, and in Alaska, where 84-year-old Republican incumbent Ted Stevens still clings to a narrow lead. But even a final vote tally may not decide his fate. That's tonight's Weekend Journal. The sitting senator who was convicted on seven felony counts just before Election Day. When a federal jury found Ted Stevens guilty of concealing $250,000 in gifts and home renovations paid for by an Alaska businessman, it appeared that his hopes for a seventh term in the U.S. Senate were dashed. Not according to Stevens. And do you think that you can be reelected at this point? Absolutely. He simply went home and told his constituents he had been railroaded. I'm here to tell you that I am innocent of the charges that were brought against me and I will be vindicated. I saw bumper stickers that said, vote for Ted until he's dead. Ken Vogel of Politico.com was recently in Alaska. He was definitely defiant. He almost tried to turn this conviction in his favor. There's a very strong distrust of, of the lower 48, outside as they call it, that runs throughout the Alaskan ethos. And he tried to play on that by saying, don't let the outside, don't let a Washington, D.C. jury tell you, Alaskans, how to best represent you in Washington, D.C. We believe that it was less than a fair trial. State Republican Party Chairman Randy Redrick believes Stevens will win on appeal, citing misconduct by the prosecution. Alaskans did not feel that that was a trial by his peers and the peers voted and have re-elected him. Well, not quite. The contest between Stevens and his Democratic opponent, Anchorage Mayor Mark Begich, who trails by 3,000 votes, is yet to be decided. 81,000 absentee and provisional ballots remain to be counted starting next week. Well, I think that the issue of integrity is a big issue right now. That issue has led the Senate leaders for both parties to say any senator with a felony Senate conviction should be expelled from Congress in case Stevens does in fact win in the coming count and then refuses to resign. I think what it came down to is Alaskans weighed his years of service and his years of bringing home the bacon more specifically versus this conviction and it's unclear what they've decided but clearly it was closer than the polls showed. Sarah Palin, Alaska's popular Republican governor and vice presidential candidate, may have helped. The McCain-Palin ticket won 62 percent of the vote there. But Palin, who previously called for Stevens to resign, now says the voters should decide what happens next. The senator has done a great job for the state of Alaska for many years, and I think the people of Alaska respect Senator Stevens and look forward to him being our representative for the next six years. Now, if Stevens were to be declared the winner, he would be the first senator ever to be re-elected after being convicted on criminal charges. As for Governor Palin, she was back in her Anchorage office late yesterday talking with reporters. Palin denounced the anonymous McCain staffers who have been criticizing her performance on the campaign trail. That's cruel. It's mean-spirited. It's immature. It's unprofessional. And those guys are jerks if they came away with it, taking things out of context and then tried to spread something on national news. It's not fair and not right.